Hi, my name is Tim Diskin, and this is my story on banding together. I'm known on the on the team as Disco, um, partly because my surname's um, Diskin, but partly because I always walk out on deck with a pair of headphones on, and that's just sort of my my trademark, I guess. So I'm 24. I was born at 24 weeks uh, with um, cerebral palsy, and at three months I had a, a stroke, which um, I've got hydrocephalus, so the cerebrospinal fluid doesn't drain naturally from my brain. So I have a valve and some tubing in there to drain the excess spinal fluid. That's essentially what keeps me alive, so to speak. <laughs> because I was born so prem, um, I was in a, an incubator for quite a while and my mother um, used to use a pair of over-ear headphones and like a little cassette player as a bit of a calming method. Um, and then I think it was about prep or grade one, I um, started learning um, keyboard, which then turned into piano. Um, just for therapy for the stiffness in my hands with the CP. Um, and then I did the Australian Music Examination Board like grading system, so grade one through to grade eight. I finished eighth grade AMEB at I think about 16 or 17. It took many, many years to just learn the fundamentals of, of swimming with cerebral palsy. A lot of the muscle memory stuff takes a lot longer and um, we tend to lose it quite quickly. So. Uh, I started competing at the age of about 10 um, and I swam with able-bodied athletes until I was about, uh, I would have been 15, 16 when I got classified as a disability swimmer. Um, and then at 19 I moved up to Canberra and didn't touch a piano for uh, the best part of about five years, but that's when I moved to um, starting the production side. So I downloaded Freddie Lit Studio on my computer and um, started sort of just um, trying to, I guess, get used to the software and remaking other people's songs just to worm my way around it. And in Canada in 2017, prior, yeah, prior to a competition, I um, had an episode where the shunt tubing broke the day before comp and within 12 hours I was comatose. So that was fun. Um, so I didn't get to compete in Canada and then I had Commonwealth Games eight months later um, and I won double gold at Com Games. So that was a little bit of a, a good comeback, I guess. The funny thing about Tim is I feel like he almost uh, leads by following, if that makes sense. Like some people, you don't have to be like an elected leader to be a leader. You don't have to be outwardly confident and like dictating things to be a leader. Sometimes it's your actions that show the most. Like you don't have to be going around telling everybody what's the way to do it. If you've got your head down and you're demonstrating a really high level of professionalism and just going about your business and setting a good example for everybody else, everybody can see that. Music's always been a, a massive part of my life and I think it really helped in that sort of eight month period for me to get back to basically my best. One artist that I really connect with is um, Avicii. So I, I started listening to, well, I guess I got into electronic dance music, well, EDM as the kids call it, but I prefer to it as house. I worked with Avicii, or Tim, and I worked with Ash to develop the best possible songs to release on Vicious Recordings. He is the melody king. Like beyond, if you talk of other people making melodies, he is, there's something about what he does when he touches a keyboard. He just makes these melodies that sit in your brain and that's what I call a hook. I remember when Levels came out and I think it was 2011, um, just how big that was and Seek Bromance was um, probably the first sort of um, EDM song that sort of got me into the genre and um, Tim's music is very, like always really melodic and um, the melodies are very simple but they sort of speak to you in a sense um, and I always find that um, before competitions, I always use really uplifting melodic songs to get myself in the mood to race. And one other thing that I do want to mention about Avicii that I always remember, he would always say to me, I love pop music. He said all the, my producer friends say, don't make stuff that's too poppy because it'll ruin your name. He did something that was fairly unique. Um, Swedish House Mafia or maybe another artist that is quite good at it. That, you skate that line um, and for the people that don't know, I was in the group Madison Avenue and there's a very fine line between this is really pop and this is dance. Um, I haven't really found an artist since that I've been able to connect with on, on that sort of sense. Like there's um, a lot more music that I found that I, I like and 
um, enjoy listening to, um, but connecting on that personal level, Avicii is the one artist that um, really sort of stood out to me. The legend that he became was born out of quite a few factors. One, perfect timing, because Piano House, there was no one else making it. Anyone that, you could literally hear his song and go, that's an Avicii song. He was a very um, introverted person and I guess on more than just the, the music level, I feel like I can connect with him on a personal level. He's gone from being quite shy and introverted and he's still kind of an introvert, but he's also quite wise now and he's got a lot to offer. Having been to Paralympic Games, won medals, I think uh, you can learn a lot from that. Um, and there's always more that you want. I think when you reach that very pinnacle, I think you can realise a lot about yourself and you can pass on that uh, wisdom to other people as well. I find that listening to music when we stretch and then when we get in the water, it sort of distracts me a little bit from the amount of physical pain and exertion we're going through. So it almost makes the, the job of training a lot easier too. So I think music has helped my longevity in the sport too. When Tim's pumping his tunes, often it's inspiration to push harder, to be able to find another gear that you wouldn't be able to otherwise find. I call it the afterburner effect, where you just have something inside you that you didn't know you could find. And sometimes when uh, Tim's cranking his tunes, uh, and we're all like really feeling that camaraderie, and um, it's just a very powerful vibe that helps you find something you didn't think you even had and unlock that to perform at a higher level. The squad here at the AIS is such a tight-knit group, and we're almost like a mini family in a sense. Um, we hang out all the time outside of training and um, we genuinely want each other to do really well in, in training sessions. I think he's um, got a lot to teach the rest of us as well, particularly about perseverance and about professionalism and um, just getting it done to, uh, to the standard of being the best in the world, really. When outsiders come in and, and train with us, they always mention how, how close and how genuine all of our want and desire for um, each other to succeed is. There's now research um, behind how music helps like athletes perform better. So there's actual evidence behind it, but I've always known in myself that music has always helped me with every part of my life and that it was gonna help with the, the swimming side of stuff. But now that there's actual like hard studies behind it, um, it's a lot more accepted by coaches and things. Um, just before COVID hit, we were in Threadbow doing a, an altitude training camp and um, that's sort of when COVID was really starting to sort of rear its head a bit and um, it was sort of uncertain about like whether there'd be a lockdown or that sort of thing. I actually saw COVID as a bit of a blessing in disguise in a sense because with how, I guess, um, successful I've been in the pool, I've actually sort of found it a little bit hard to motivate myself individually to keep striving to like better myself. I, the restart really helped me find sort of why I enjoy swimming, what I want to do and um, what makes me enjoy it. So my, my next sort of swimming goal um, is to, I guess, make Paralympics, try to perform as well as I can for my country in individual and in relay swims and um, just better myself as, as a person in and out of the pool. Um, and then beyond that, um, after Tokyo, I'm going to start studying a certificate for in education support because I want to become a, a teacher aide for kids with physical and um, intellectual disabilities. The last, uh, what was it, last three or four years of my schooling, I was at a school for kids with physical and intellectual impairments purely because I was bullied through primary and secondary school to the point where I almost died because kids decided they'd use my head as target practice. When I moved to the special school, um, that's when I decided to get classified as a disability swimmer. I was swimming able blood up until that point. Um, so then I guess that's also what sort of shaped my swimming career in that sense too. Because I, I, I don't think I would have taken swimming as, as far if I hadn't um, moved into that better environment. And um, through year 10, 11, 12, um, as a sort of development thing, they decided to get me to do a bit of um, like teacher aid work with um, some of the younger students in the primary school and, and that sort of stuff and in their PE sort of stuff. So that's something I really enjoy and get a lot of fulfillment out of. And um, the kids always sort of looked up to me and um, I found that really inspiring. I think um, music in general is a, a very big, important part of um, 
like the sporting culture and um, just people's lives in general, like sporting or not really. I think, um, yeah, music's just a, a big sort of part of everyday life in that sense. <laughs>